What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Happy New Year. Once again, it's 2019. Let's get it. Now in today's video, we'll be focusing on TOEFL integrated writing. So you better take out your notebooks, gr grab your writing utensils and copy the note taking diagram that's on the board. So the R stands for the reading's opinion. One, two, three are the different sections for the body paragraphs notes. Understand? Now, uh, basically what we're thinking about is the ideal position to be in after you're done taking notes for three minutes, when you're done reading the passage, you should know, already know, exactly or almost exactly what you're going to type in your essay. Okay? So please avoid just writing down random nouns and keywords. You got to start thinking about the actual sentences that you're going to be writing in your essay so that you can not only save a lot of time while you're typing the essay, but also understand the information a little bit better. Okay. And paraphrase, because that's basically what you're going to have to do when you're uh, writing down the readings information. Don't forget the reading passage does not disappear. And that is not something that's supposed to help us because the reading passage never disappears. It is our responsibility to paraphrase and to just pinpoint the most important details. Understand? All right. So let's go to my laptop and look at the reading passage together. All right. Let's jump right into the reading passage. The topic for today's integrated writing prompt is fish farming. So please do not paraphrase fish farming to something else unless you know that it is completely fine. So if the professor said another version of fish farming and you heard what it was, use it. And if the reading passage happens to present us, us with a synonym for fish farming, then utilize that as well. But don't go and make something up. So don't be like fish agriculture. That sounds really awkward. Okay. Now we're going to start reading from the last sentence of the introdu introduction paragraph as always, because this is where the reading passages opinion is revealed to us. Now, once we are aware of the reading passages opinion, we should also know basically what the topic and lectures opinion both are. Okay. So let's read the sentence. Although this seems to be a good idea at first, fish farming has a number of safety issues, both to the fish and consumers, which make it a dangerous activity. So the reading is clearly saying that fish farming is bad. So the topic is whether or not fish farming is beneficial. And the lecturer is going to say that fish farming is okay to say the least. So the professor is going to definitely argue against the idea that it's bad, that it's detrimental, but we're not sure if the professor is going to say that fish farming is good just yet. All right, now let's move on to the first body. The fish are kept closely confined in pens. Um, pens means cages, an environment for which they are not naturally suited. This makes the instance of disease higher in captivity than it is in the wild. Okay. Due to the proximity, proximity means distance between the fish. Diseases are also spread more rapidly than in natural settings. So the chances of some disease going unnoticed and being passed on to the public are fairly high. Okay. So the readings first body paragraph is telling us that since the fish in fish farms are kept in close proximity to one another in unnatural environments, also known as cages, the chances of diseases being spread and also being consumed by the public are fairly high, which is obviously something that's not good. All right, now let's move on to the second body. Fish farmers add various chemicals to the water to prevent the spread of potential diseases. Great. These chemical additives are also put in the fish's food in order to help the fish attain sizes larger than they would have reached in the wild. So there's two reasons. Fish farmers add uh, various chemicals to not only prevent the spread of diseases, but also to help the fish become larger than they naturally can. And the reading passage wrote two separate sentences for that idea for no reason. Notice it and change it into one, combine it into one sentence. These chemicals, once absorbed into the bodies of the fish, can be dangerous to the people who are dining on them. Fairly obvious. Okay, so the reading's second main point is that fish farmers try to prevent the, the rampant spread of potential diseases by adding various chemicals. Um, but when all is said and done, those chemicals are harmful to the individuals who pay food and eat the fish. Um, so that's not good. All right. Now the third body paragraph, the fish feed mostly on other fish, which are killed and processed before being fed to the fish on the farms. 
However, the fish used as food are caught in the oceans and represent a large amount of food taken out of the wild. Since they are a potential source of protein for other sea creatures, the loss of this food source may have an adverse effect on ecosystems throughout the world's oceans. All right, so the reading passage's third main point is that fish farmers utilize other fish to produce the feed for the fish in their farms. But this method of feeding the fish can have a negative effect on the ecosystems throughout the world's oceans since it basically means that food sources for other sea creatures are being taken away, okay? All right, now that we're done with the reading passage, let's listen to the lecture. All right, now, if needed, please take out a new piece of paper and make another note-taking diagram. This time, change the R to an L because we're gonna be listening to the lecture, okay? Here's the lecture. Fish farming is one of the most important sources of fish protein for many people nowadays. There are, sadly, many critics of fish farming who oppose its use. Uh, however, it's quite necessary because many fish raised on fish farms can no longer be harvested in the wild, and fortunately, fish farming can provide fish that are safe to eat. Many critics of fish farming point out the possibility of diseases running rampant throughout the farms due to the nearness of the fish. However, let me point out that fish live very close together in the wild. You've seen pictures of big schools of fish, haven't you? How is this different from a fish farm? Anyway, in the wild there is no rapid spread of disease despite fish living close together. And studies have shown the incidence of disease in the wild and on farms is identical. Chemical usage on fish farms has raised some, hmm, red flags as to the safety of the fish. But even ocean fish observe large amounts of chemicals from pollution. In fact, farmed fish may be even safer than ocean caught fish. Besides, virtually every meat we consume, including beef and pork, has been chemically enhanced to help the animals grow bigger. Yes, it's true. Fish is much healthier than these meats, having less fat and healthier oils like omega-3s. While some fish species are killed to produce the feed needed for fish on the farms, most of these fish are not even consumed by humans or many sea creatures. One such fish is the Manhattan. Humans find its taste to be bad, so it's caught in large quantities to produce animal feed. Therefore, by using the Manhattan and others to feed fish on farms, we can increase the number of fish raised for human consumption. All right, now before I type my sample essay, let's look at the notes and understand what the professor said. Okay, now, the professor's opinion in this lecture was very, very extensive. So he started out by saying that fish farming is actually one of the most important sources for fish protein. And then he talked about the reading's opinion and then gave us the reason. Because many fish cannot be harvested in the wild anymore. And fish farming can provide fish that are safe to eat. Okay? All right. Now, for the first argument, the professor said that we shouldn't forget that fish live very close together um, in the wild. Uh, for example, we are all familiar with enormous schools of fish, right? Groups of fish, because we see them all the time in pictures, videos, and even in, the, in real life. So the professor is saying that the, the situation is not different, okay? However, there is no rampant spread of diseases in the wild. So yeah, the situation is very, very similar or even the same. Okay, now for the second argument, the professor said that fish in the ocean actually absorb large amounts of chemicals from pollution. Now, we all know that pollution is a very serious issue. Hence, it might even be safer to eat the fish from fish farms. Plus, every meat, so like beef, pork, and um, chicken, every meat that we eat um, has already been chemically enhanced to help them grow much larger. Uh, as a result, it would be safer and healthier to eat the fish from fish farms because fish have less fat and healthy oils like omega-3, okay? So the professor is basically saying that, um, yeah, the, um, the introduction and the usage of chemicals is something that we cannot neglect, overlook, but it's already happening to us anyway. So it's not something that's making the situation worse, okay? All right, now for the third argument, the professor said that 
most of the fish used or caught for the feed in fish farms are not consumed by humans or other creatures. To be more specific, the Manhattan. So when I first heard this, I thought it was the Manhattan, like, you know, the city in New York, but it's actually the Manhattan. And I only realized this because I searched it on the web and I found out that there is no fish called the Manhattan, but it really sounds like that, right? So what I'm saying is, if you didn't know how to properly spell this species of fish, don't feel bad because unless you're a sailor or a person who's actually a part of, um, I don't know, maybe the food industry, I'm guessing you didn't know how to spell this fish's name, okay? All right, anyways, the last part, it goes without saying that fish farmers are choosing to use fish like this in order to raise more fish for human consumption. So more fish that's delicious and um, actually appealing, appetizing to individuals and maybe even other sea creatures. All right, now that we know what I took notes on, let's type my sample essay. All right, I just finished my sample essay, so let's read it together. However, before we dive into it, I want you guys to always keep in mind that you have to be responsible writers who utilize their potential to the fullest, okay? So what I'm saying is, if you are capable of spicing things up by writing a more eloquent and more uh, lavish, fancy sentence, please don't forget to do that. Don't forget to take that extra step so that you can impress the reader just a little bit more, okay? So what I said while we were looking at the reading passage together and what I wrote in this essay are going to be completely different because I'm trying to impress the reader or you guys, okay? So let's read this essay. Introduction. The reading passage and lecture have conflicting opinions about whether or not fish farming is beneficial to both the ocean's ecosystem and consumers. The article strongly postulates that this activity in actuality possesses numerous safety issues and negative aspects, making it quite perilous. On the other hand, the listening adamantly delineates that Fish farming is now one of the most important sources for fish protein because many species of fish can no longer be harvested in the wild and fish farming can provide food that is safe to eat. Great news. Now let's move on to the first body. First and foremost, according to the author of the excerpt, fish farmers keep fish in close proximity to one another in an artificial environment. Hence, since the fish are kept in overcrowded pens, the likelihood of diseases being spread and passed on to the public, those eating the fish, are extremely high. Nonetheless, the lecture offsets th these points by declaring that most, if not all, species of fish already live very close together in the wild. For example, it's common to see pictures and videos of enormous schools of fish in the wild, meaning that there's no difference. On the contrary, there is no rampant spread of diseases in the wild, so the incidence of diseases in the wild and fish farms are essentially identical. Okay, let's move on to the second body paragraph. The professor in the lecture further points out that because fish in the ocean also absorb large amounts of chemicals from pollution, it might even be safer to eat the fish produced by fish farms. Besides, virtually every meat that people in today's world consume is chemically enhanced in order to make animals attain larger sizes. In other words, it's much healthier to eat fish owing to the fact that it has less fat and beneficial oils such as omega-3. These claims refute the writer's implications of how fish farming is a dangerous activity due to the usage of chemicals which prevent the proliferation of diseases and enable the fish to grow larger. Okay, last body paragraph. We're almost done. The article lastly asserts that the ocean's ecosystem is negatively affected by fish farming since the feed used to raise the fish are actually other species of fish caught from the ocean. Thus, sea creatures may lose their precious source of protein because of fish farms. The speaker in the lecture counters these points by stating that Fish farmers deliberately use certain fish species that are not consumed by humans or other marine animals to circumvent this issue. Circumvent means avoid. To be more specific, the Manhattan is a fish that is deemed unappetizing to the majority of people and sea creatures. Therefore, fish farmers catch the Manhattan in large quantities and use it to raise larger amounts of tasty fish for human consumption. Okay, so that sounds like something that makes complete sense to me and it sounds like a good idea. 
All right, guys, that just about wraps up today's video. Please remember to study my sample essay because that's the answer sheet for this specific, for this particular integrated writing question. So study it until you know it like it's the back of your hand if this question gave you a lot of trouble, okay? Now, since this is the end of the video, I'm gonna say like the video if you enjoyed my sample essay, subscribe to the channel if you still have not done so, share my channel with your close friends and family members who might need it, and if you are a dedicated and disciplined individual, reach out to me about my tutoring services. Let's get the score that you need and deserve. The next video will be on TOEFL Independent Speaking Task 1 and 2, so if those questions are giving you a lot of trouble, stay tuned and check it out. Peace.